Yes, please. Praise. Praise. Is finally home. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Yes. Betty is finally home. For those of you who are visiting, Betty has had uh, two hip operations in the last six weeks, eight weeks. Eight weeks. So we're so thankful Betty is back in church and home. Uh, thankful for that. Any other requests? Yes, please. Lisa. Wonderful. Her father asked for a prayer request for the pressure in her father's eyes, and it's been normalized now. So thankful for that. Just in case you're wondering why I repeat all these, because we have a few, probably a dozen or so people watching online this morning, and so it kind of gets them in the in the prayer request list uh, mode. Yes, please, Faye. Amen. Patrick and I would have had to sing together. <laughs> okay, well, let's, um, we're crowded in here, so I'm just going to ask you to, to bow your head and, uh, and just remain seated, and I'll lead us in prayer. Dear Lord, I just thank you so much that we can come to you in prayer when we need you, and that you're a prayer-answering God. You know, when I, when I look around in the world around us, and I was just listening to someone who was on the radio this week, a skeptic that you even exist and that you care about what's happening around us. And yet, I, as I intertwine with people's lives in this congregation, we know that you answer those prayers. And we praise you today for the fact that you're with us. And and we just ask you, Lord, to be with all the prayers that have been mentioned this morning. I won't try to mention each one again. At the tips of my fingers here are all these names on the prayer list. And Lord, you are the, the one who is the ultimate physician. And you know for those that would, you, you will heal. And Lord, we trust you with them if you, if you choose not to heal them. We just leave our very lives and the very lives of all those around us and our friends in your hands today if we want to trust you. This morning, Jesus, we offer our praise to you and thank you for what you have been to us and yet what you will be to us in the future and just today. You satisfy every need that we have. And so at Christmas time here, we find our joy in you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. So, it's Christmas. Christmas 2017. Yet our world is very different from the world that Jesus entered on that first Christmas about 2,000 years ago. Shepherding is kind of out of oak, and uh, none of us really keep livestock in caves. To be honest, most of us don't even have livestock. No one travels by donkey anymore, and wise men seem to be in short supply. <laughs> Yet, as old as the story is, the message of Christmas is never dated, never irrelevant. Because our hearts today are just as needy as the hearts of God's children two centuries ago. We still look at all that is happening around us with uncertain eyes. We watch political giants jockey for position and dominion, not unlike they have done throughout all of history. We hear violence in both nature and among men. We watch it on TV. And sometimes we even live it, whether others are aware of it or not. Today the voice of the angel speaks directly to us. Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall come to all people. What makes Christmas so relevant is that God is still bringing good news to his children. The gift of salvation has never expired and had to be removed from the shelf. And God's children who understand this miracle are still responding to the good news with overflowing hearts and inexpressible gratitude. 
Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him with a trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with strings and flute. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Hello? Amen. Are you breathing? Yes. Then it is time for you to join in too. The angels are just warming up. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Wadsworth Longfellow wrote the song that we're going to sing when he was having a bad Christmas. His wife had recently died and things looked dark. So if you were having a bad Christmas this year, please listen to the words. In them there is for you a message of hope.
I invite you to turn to hymn number 122, Hark, the Herald Angels Sing.
our mind. After all, Latin is a dead language, right? <laughs> Glory to God in the highest. That's what it means. But that doesn't really sound much like how we talk today either. Glory to God. Well, that part is pretty self-explanatory. Honor God in all his magnificence. Okay, so we try to do that. But what about the highest? What is the highest? Where is the highest? The highest place I can think of, in every way, is heaven. There is no height, no joy, no light, no love like that which is in heaven. But the angels were in heaven all the time, and being with God was nothing new to them. Not that even an angel would ever get tired of being able to go directly to God, but why were all those angels flooding heaven with all that music, all that glory to God? Because even the angels were shocked. Even the angels were flabbergasted. Those who were used to God's glory and his luminous light were seeing something that totally took their understanding of God and his magnificent love to a whole new level. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The light of heaven has come into the darkness of earth, and frankly, the angels were completely amazed. Are we?
the stars are brightly shining, it is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining, till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks the new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, O oh, hear the angel voices, O oh, night divine, O oh, night when Christ was born, O oh, night, O oh, holy night, O oh, night divine. Truly, he taught us to love one another. His law is love, and his gospel is peace.